Hello and welcome. Today I will show you how to set up Unity and the Unity Perception package to create synthetic image data for your machine learning project. I will use the DICE example I've created for this video and you find a download link in the description for a package that contains the models and the code I'm using. In this video I will explain you the core setup and next time I will explain you how to use the randomizer to create a lot of different images with different camera angles, lighting and colors and things like that. And if you haven't done so, please consider subscribing to my channel. Unity Perception is supported on Unity 2019 and 2020. So we create a new project. Unity Perception is supported either on the high definition render pipeline or the universal render pipeline. I'm using URP here, give it a name and go. Okay, first thing we have to do is to import the Unity Perception package. So go to Windows, Package Manager, and then right now the Perception package is in experimental status. So you have to go to this little plus here and then add package from git url and then enter com.unity.perception enter when it's done importing there's one central thing you have to adjust and this is go to settings the forward renderer and then you have to add the ground truth renderer feature here so that's it. And the next thing is to import the package I've provided you for download. Custom package. Um, here it's called the DICE Experiment Unity package. Open it up and then just import everything. After the import you could directly start with your project. So I just go to scene here we imported a new scene called Dice Experiment. You want, want to save the current dummy scene. And now everything's set up, you can just run it. And it will generate tons of images of dice. But now I will guide you step by step through the process how to set up that kind of scene. So let's start and create a new scene. Create scene. Let's just call it dice. And the first thing we need to do is go to the main camera and add a component that's called perception camera here. This is the main component that creates the images at the end. And for testing purposes, you see here save camera output to disk. I'm currently disabling it, so it won't write any of the images to disk. And then you see here a warning, a synchronous shader compilation may result in invalid data, blah, blah, blah. So if you want to change this, go to project settings, and then in the editor part here, Go down and disable the asynchronous shader compilation. And if you go back to the main camera in the inspector, then you see the warning will be gone. Next thing we need to do is to add a labeler to the camera. So there are different labelers to create bounding boxes or counting the objects or just writing out the info or do semantic segmentation. So we are using the rendered object info labeler. This is a basic labeler that assigns the correct label to an image. So now you see here we need an ID label config. Usually you have to create this one, but I've provided you with one in the imported package. So just select it. And if we go to it, now what does it do? It assigns an ID to a certain label. So in our case, we are using dice. So a dice has six sides. And for each side, we assign a different label. Later, we will see where to use the labels that we have to assign to the dice. Next thing we need to do is go to the game view. And here you have to set the resolution for your images. 
In my case, it's already set because I've worked on the project before. I've chosen a resolution of 200 by 200 pixel for my dice images. If you want a different resolution, just add the corresponding width and height in this field. And this is the resolution that's then taken for the images generated by the system. Next thing, we want to have a plane where to place our dice. So we are taking a plane and we are setting the dimensions to 20 on the X and that axis. If we go to scene view, we see this is our plane. And now we need something that controls our scenario that controls how many images we generate and what kind of randomization we will use. So we create a empty game object. We call it scenario. And on this game object, we add a component that's called fixed length scenario. So this is a component provided by Unity Perception. It comes with some constants you can set. And there are two constants that are most important for us. The first is the number of total iterations. For instance, the default is 100. That means if you start the scenario, it will create 100 images. As we have set quit on complete, that means we start the scenario after 100 images, it will automatically stop. And the other thing is we want to have one frame per iteration. That means every frame we will generate one new image. And you see down here is an area where we could add randomizers. This is something I will show you next time. So now we need some objects which we want to use for our images. So I provided you with prefabs for the dice and I'm using four different models. So let's put them into the scenario if you focus on it. So this is one of the dice models and all of them have the same structure. They have a parent game object and a child game object and the child game object carries the mesh renderer and the mesh itself. And also the materials that we will change later on in the randomizer. And the parent game object carries this labeling script and I assigned the label five to it. That's the label five we've seen previously in this ID label config. Here we have the label five and it assigns the ID five to this game object. I used the structure of this parent and child game object to be able to put the origin of this game object to zero, zero, zero. And this allows me later on to simply scale the game object during the randomization phase. For instance, I can go to the scale mode and now I can just scale up and down and it will still stick to the ground. And here are the other three different models that I'm using. And now we can go to the game view and here you can see how the dice is seen by the camera. So in the game view, we can position the view so that it's more on seen from the top and then we can take the main camera, go to game object, align with view and then you see down here the camera view is more from the top and you can see that's a five. But there's another thing that we see, you see here in the shadows that some light is peeking through so we have to go to the directional light and adjust the shadow setting. Go to custom and then reduce the normal can also increase the depth a little. So now you see we have nice shadows without any light peeking through. So now we can do a test run. Go to the main camera and ensure that safe camera output to disk is enabled so images are written to disk. Now go to the scenario and reduce the number of iterations to maybe five because right now we are creating just the same image over and over again because we are not using any kind of randomization. And now you can hit play. It will run for a moment and will stop playing. It seems nothing has happened, but actually it has written some images to disk. But where are they? 
And this is a little tricky. So on Mac, you have to go to library, then to application support. Then it writes it to a folder called default company. I will show you where to change this in a moment. And then you have to find your project. We have called it perception. And here you find a strange folder and then an even more strange folder RGB. And here you find the different images. And as we have no renderization, we have five times the same image. Right now it's not possible to write the images to an individual folder. The only thing you can change is that it's not written to the default company, but maybe to your own company name folder. Go to project settings and then to the player settings. And up here you can set the name of your company. So that's it for this video. Next time I will explain how to use the randomizer to change colors and position and things like that.